Mishka. He has become a saint because he always proposed a new reality in a world that was darkening. And that reality is the same reality that is proposed here at World Youth Day, the reality of Jesus Christ. So I thought today, as I was speaking to you about the thoughts of Pope John Paul II, that I would speak about simply three things. One that he spoke of at World Youth Day in Toronto, the two ways that life and the response to life is one of two options, to follow God and the just or to follow the world. And the second is a question of identity. Who am I and who are you, God? And the third is the freedom, the freedom that the saints have found. So let me begin. The psalmist says in Psalm 1 that there is the way of the just, that is the way of God and the way of the world. And we must choose between these two ways. And how happy the man whose delight is the Lord, for the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. We were all made to follow the way of the just. But you, you may object to me, and you may say, but I am a sinner, and I cannot always walk the ways of God. And I say to you, welcome. Welcome to the body of Christ, to the church, for she is a field hospital for sinners who are not yet perfect. Come, come to this World Youth Day to encounter the God who calls himself mercy. You have come to Krakow, the capital, the world capital of mercy. It is from this place that the Lord commissioned St. Faustina to be his messenger, his apostle, his apostle of mercy. And he commissioned her to tell the world how much our lack of trust in his love pains his heart. He longs for us to stop hiding from him. And Jesus asks us to have an unshakable confidence that he is for us. And from this city, God raised up St. John Paul II to preach to the world from the pulpit at St. Peter's in Rome, the good news of the dignity of the human person and the treasury of God's mercy. And again, I suspect you may object and you may say to me, but I am not always faithful and I do not deserve to be in Jesus's company. Welcome, I say to you, welcome to the family of those whose desire to be faithful is greater than their capacity at times to remain faithful. We must ask for God's help. So if you have not always been faithful in following the ways of God, walk, walk with repentance into the arms of his forgiving mercy, which awaits you this week in the sacrament of confession. And let the words of St. John Paul II to the young people at another World Youth Day echo in your hearts. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us and our real capacity to become the image of his son. We have a choice to follow the ways of the Lord or to follow the ways of, of the world. Which will you choose? And now to identity. We ask the question, who are you, God? And who am I? Before you existed, God thought of you and his desire for you was the genesis of your being. Regardless of your conception, whether as God intended in the holy embrace of married love, or in sin or violence, or by parents ignorant of God's plan for love, God's desire and design for your life is unchanging and will be accomplished with your cooperation. Each one of us is a child of God, a longed for daughter or son of the Father of mercies, created in time to live forever, a person sacred 
for you bear the image of God, possessing an innate capacity for freedom, the ability to know God and to grow in his likeness through communion of love found in his son, Jesus Christ. You are a delight to the triune God who longs to bring to you the greatness he created for you. You know, a few years ago, the sisters came to know a young woman that I'll call Monica. It's not her real name. She lived nearby us in the Bronx in New York City. Grace, the Lord's grace was stirring in Monica's heart and she attended one of our young women's retreats, a retreat which would change her life and recapture the hope she needed to dream. Let me tell you Monica's story in her own words. She says this, she said, I didn't have a relationship a girl needs to have with her father. I had several broken relationships with men and had seen a lot of abuse. I didn't know who I was and I felt unlovable. And yet I still wanted to give myself away. I decided to go on a retreat with the Sisters of Life whose theme was perfect love casts out fear. And I really wanted to believe that was true. One of the sisters gave a conference on the dignity of being a woman made in the image and likeness of God. And when she described woman as the crowning glory of creation, something happened to me. It dawned on me, I have so much to give. God made everything and he decided to make me. The world must need me. I went to the Lord in prayer saying, Jesus, show me how to be a woman. I needed to know the truth about who I am. I had been living in a world of so much anger and fear, feeling I could never be pure again. That weekend, I knew God was saying, you have dignity. You do not need to degrade yourself. I understood then that I needed help and it wasn't long before I was able to receive God's forgiveness. It made me cry for I knew I wasn't alone anymore. In the months that followed, Monica acknowledged that there were challenges in adjusting to a new way of life. But she said, I started sitting before the Blessed Sacrament because it was the one place that I felt myself. I would just sit there and allow myself to be loved and I started living, really living. Monica became a leader in the Catholic young adult community in the South Bronx, and through a set of circumstances that one could only describe as God's providence, she was offered a full four-year scholarship to an exceptional Catholic university where she recently completed her four-year degree, fulfilling a dream that she could hardly allow herself to dream. Like Monica, you have come to World Youth Day to encounter Jesus Christ. You may be wondering how you got here. You were signed up by a parent, you came because a friend was going, or someone handed you a ticket at the last moment. But honestly, those are not the reasons you are here. You are here because God chose you to be here, to be here to discover your true identity. And among you, there are those young pilgrims who have yet to encounter Jesus Christ, and we will pray with you these days that you come to an understanding and to an experience of who he is. And there are young pilgrims here who have known Jesus and have parted from his company for a week, for months, for years perhaps, and Jesus invites you to reclaim the innocence and the peace and the freedom of living in his presence. And there are young pilgrims here who know Jesus Christ and live in his life. Pray, pray for the grace to open the doors of your heart and your mind to Christ so that you may encounter the living God and come to know and receive your life as a gift, to know and experience that you are a gift for others and that each of you has been created in love 
and that your life is a question to which love is the only answer. And to know that the horizons of your life include the supernatural, make room for the mystery of God. It is the Christian, the disciple of Jesus Christ, who knows the freedom of the sons of God in Christ and within the sacramental life of the church, the mystical body of Christ, we are set free to live fully. Once set free in Christ, you will experience in full measure your dignity as a human person and find God's plan for love. It is in Christ that you can stand secure in this world with the knowledge and the confidence that Jesus' loving gaze never departs from you. That was the rock on which the saints of this city stood in the midst of turmoil, oppression, and persecution. And know that somewhere in the world there is someone whom you may never know, who prays daily for you. Rely on those prayers, for they will win you the strength you need to respond to the whisper you hear in your heart that tells you that your life is important and that you are loved without measure by the God who created you. These truths will set you free. Live believing the truth about yourself and you will become a witness to the greatest freedom of all, men and women, fully alive in the Lord and capable of reflecting the glory of God. May God bless each one of you.